Once again, you're welcome to the class. This is the next stage of the sight singing training class. And today we're looking at keys and key signatures. Keys and key signatures. Who can tell me the importance of keys and key signatures? Why is it so necessary for us to look at keys and key signatures? If you don't mind, I may call. Uh, B11, can you tell us the importance of keys and key signatures? Why is it necessary for us to even get go through these at all? Keys and key signatures. B11. Okay, we're not hearing you though. Are you, are you speaking? Yes, can you hear me? Hey, your voice is low. Your voice is very low. Okay. Your voice is low. Maybe we should have another person talk while you adjust your microphone. Uh, B15. B15, can you tell us the importance of just looking at keys and key signatures? Okay, in my own words, I think they help us to know where to start our door and to know um, the, the, whether I say, if generally they help us to know where to start our door, which line now becomes our the which line and spaces or space becomes the door. And from there okay. we can take off. Okay, thank you. Who has one I had to that? I believe that many of us have actually gone through this, this part of the class before, somewhere, you know, maybe somewhere, somewhere we're coming from. Uh, we've learned all these things, but we just, we're just gonna move through keys and key signatures like in a, in a fast manner. So, but I just want us to interact on this. It seems all after actually it's not new to us, okay? So why do you think it's necessary to at least be sure we have appropriate knowledge on keys and key signatures? Yes, okay, I'm not calling names. I'm not calling you again. So if you're willing to talk, just, just raise up your hand and then I will allow you to talk. Okay, B11, you can talk. It also helps us to know the key that we are singing on the tune to use the key. For instance, if it, we are singing on C major and the rest B, B flat major and the rest of them. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much, B11. Um, you are both correct, of course. Uh, the key will make us to, it's like you cannot have access to a particular flat. You cannot have access to a building. You cannot have access to anything without your key. You need a key, okay? So for us to be able to sing a song, we need the key, the access code. So the key is the password to sing a song, okay? So if, if we have a musical piece, if we have a music piece in front of us and we want to sing it, we would see the stave, we would see you know, you know, the nodes on the different lines and spaces and everything. And then you're looking, okay, how are these black and white notes now? Or, or these black notes now? How am I going to interpret them to become sounds and tones and music itself? Okay, for, for that to happen, you need a key. And that key is these key signatures. Is either they are, they are either in flats or they are either in sharps, okay? So, and that's why we're considering this. Very, very important. It will make us to know where the tonic is. The tonic is the resting note. Just like our, our sister the other time said, uh, it will make us to know where the do is. That's the tonic. If you know where the tonic is, the resting note is, then from there you can pick up and say, okay, the next one is this, the next one is this, the next one is this, okay? So that's why we need to know what keys and key signatures are. All right, so for keys and key signatures, let's start with the sharps. 
in every music piece, either you see the sharps or you see the flats as the keys. They will be placed, the keys, the signatures are normally symbols that are placed right in front of the, of the clefs. It's, they are placed right in, immediately after the clefs, okay? That's where they are put. We'll be able to, depending on the number of the sharps you have, being placed in front of the cliff or the flats you have, and you're able to know what is the key to this song, all right? So looking at, 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 at sharps now, if you, have, if you don't have any, anything placed there, then you know that that key is C. If there's no sharp, there's no sharp sign at all, put in front of your cliff, that's C. The next one, if you have only one, that's G. If you have two, that's D. If you have three, that's A. If you have uh four that's e if you have five that's b if you have six that's f sharp and if you have uh seven that's c sharp all right for flats if you have only one that's f if you have two that's b flat if you have three that's e flat if you have four that's a flat if you have five that's b uh, d flat if you have Six, that's G flat. If you have C, if you have seven, that's C flat. Of course, these are major keys. Okay, we are still going to get to minor keys later on when we go to when we go when we get to scales. All right. So, for you to be able to understand very well what we're talking about, I have drafted this for you. Uh, this with with this, I'm able to remember all these uh, sharps and flats and all that. Okay, this is a good way for you to have this at your fingertips because when you want to sight sing now, you're not going to go and look at your lecture notes and say, ah, how many sharps am I having here? Okay, I'm having five. Let me go and check my lecture note. Uh, what's, what's, what does five sharps translate to? What's the key? No, you're not going to do that. You need to have it at your fingertips. Okay, five means this. Four of, of sharps means that. Okay, so just know that um, if you have just one, it's going to be G. D, A, E, B, F, C. So that's why we said, okay, just we can use this mnemonics. It can be go down and enter by faith, comfort, okay? And you know that these sharps are fitted on these lines and spaces. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. For me, I don't need, the, I don't need to look for a special mnemonics for this. I can just say F, C, G, Daheb. I don't know if that makes sense. It's not a word anyway, but I can say FCG Daheb. So for sharps, I know that go down and enter by faith comfort and these sharps are fitted in this order, FCG Daheb. If I have one, it's fitted on F. If I have two, it's fitted on F and C. If I have three, it's fitted on FCG. If I have four, FCG D. Okay, if I have five, FCG Da. If I, you know, so I know that FCG that I have makes me know exactly where these sharps fit on, on my lines and spaces, okay? Then, um, what about the flats? Flats, these are the flats. Flats, if you have one, you have F, two, B, three, E. So, so it means that this can be flats become easy after direct guide comfort. This is... Is not a, this is not a fixed mnemonic. If you like, you can have your own, or maybe you have used to you are used to knowing it in a different way. But the most important thing is that if you have one flat, it is F. If you have two flat, it is B. The key becomes B flat. If you have three flats, the key becomes what E flat. If you have four flats at the beginning of the song, the key becomes what A flat, A flat major. Okay, so that's the way to look at it. And these flats are also fitted on. Mm, um, the other one I said, I used FCG Daheb to know where they fit on, okay? But these ones I can say, where the flats fit on, let me say bead, okay? Bead, some of us know bead. Africans use beads, isn't it? <laughs> bead. So I would say bead GCF, bead GCF. So if I have one flat, it's fitted on B. If I have uh, two flats, it's fitted on B and E. If I have five flats, it is bead G. Okay. If I have seven flats, bead GCF, you know, no, bead GC, you know. So, 
So that is it. So can we master this right now? And let me be sure that we have grabbed what I am talking about. If you have any question on these three slides I've just displayed, um, I'm ready to take them now before I move on. And But before I take your questions, let me ask if, if you can remember what we have just talked about in terms of the sharps. Um, how do you remember the sharps now? If you, if you have your key signature to be sharps and uh, maybe there are three, there are four, there are five. I want, I, want to, I want to hear your whole mnemonics, your previous mnemonics that you used to knowing. Uh, to remember the key signatures, or if you don't have anyone previously, if you are able to now master these now, um, can you uh, let me know if you have been able to master this, or if you have known one before, let me know the one you know. Let me just hear from you. Is there anyone who would like to, to say anything on that, about that? uh who has not talked b3 b3 i want to hear from you are, are you familiar with keys and key signatures yes sir okay what's your what's your mnemonics of remembering the sharps go down and enter by faith see okay by faith see can you see everyone can you hear that so that means that, I mean, it depends on how you've been able to know it. Okay, and how have you known the, where the sharps are fitted upon, on the lines and the spaces? Um, I, I was in conversance with that. Once oh. I knew that. Okay, so now you know it now that uh, these sharps are not, just, are, not just, are not just fitted on. Because when you start composing your own songs now, and you want to tell everyone, oh, my song is on A sharp, A sharp major. You're not gonna, you're not gonna just put the three sharps anywhere. <laughs> so they have a place where they have to be. If it's one sharp, there's a place it has to be. If it's three sharps, now you know where they where they are. B three, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Let's hear from another person who has not talked. B five. Let me hear from B five. Is there, uh, is there a way you've known sharps um, to as key signatures? How have you known it to be to remember them? The same way, go the down and way. By, faith. by faith. Oh, by faith, yeah. what? See, or just but normally I just I memorize go down and enter by faith. But I okay. Okay. okay, okay, okay. C has to be there. C is the last one. Okay, um, so how have you known where these shops are fitted on? I think I'm seeing this too. I've, I've not really been concerned. Oh, wow, I've not really noted that. Oh, okay. So now you know, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I just, I try to run the scale. Uh, you try to run the scale. I, I know that when is G, then F, when is D, something like that. Like, you I just know, know that. And I, I, I know that when is G, like previous one, you know, it's F, G, C, D, G, A, D, E, something like that. Okay, okay. So if you already know, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I mean, I don't, um, have, I don't have acronym for it. You don't have acronym for it. All right. Okay. Let's go to another person. We talk about flats now. Uh, B8. B8. I've come to B8 now. Um, flats. How have you remembered flats? How have you memorized these keys of flats? Yes. All right. Uh, I, I knew it to be flat before easy. After the uh, divine guidance, and counsel. after divine guidance, that's cool. Ah, uh, what about you? Don't forget the C as well, you know. Yeah, uh, something counsel, counsel, okay. Divine guidance and counsel, okay. That's interesting. You not put it, you not put the A, you know, it's something like all these um, symbols, so the what that you know, the one will not be confused. I didn't get it. I said, you know, if you put the and, that means there is addition of a. But the way I knew it to be, you will not, you will not write it as a. It's a kind of that your and will be a symbol, so that you will not be confused with the letters. You get me now. 
No. Can you just you know, come again? I said that become easy after divine guidance and counsel. Okay. But and you will not write it as A N D. Oh, now I see. And. Okay. So how have you known where they are fitted on? Uh, in my previous class, we were taught uh, Father Charles goes down and enter uh, and end battle. Okay. I mean, so that so that you now know that is the opposite way. Or sharp, yes. So when you get oh. to class, the opposite of what you just said. That's very good. Of course, like I said, you know, some of we are for you to be in this class, definitely you might have come across this before. So, I mean, you don't have to change how you have known these ones because you have been using this for a long time. But just in case you don't, you, you have not known this before, you can add to your knowledge or you can just update your archive. All right, so let's move on then. Let's move on then. So, but you know that um the way this works is that if you now see this at the beginning of your song piece let's say that let's come let's use um i hope you are looking at my screen and you are looking at my cursor let's say that i'm on e flat now because the number of flats i'm seeing at the beginning of the stave is three so i'm saying flats become easy okay so that means my key is e flat major so that means that my tonic where my do is is going to be on e so on the on the g stave which is the treble stave my e is on which line on the g stave which is the treble stave my e is on which line um b let me call someone b6 my e is on which line on the treble stave B6. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, sorry. Repeat the question, please. My E will be on which line on the treble stave? Because now I have seen that my key is E flat. So I want to start sight reading or sight singing now. So first, my tonic, which is Do, will be on E. So now, where, where is the, line. It will be the, on the first the line? Thank you. Thank you. It's gonna be on the first line, thank you. So now, from that place now, I know that that's where do is, okay? And the next piece will be, will be re or, you know, then the, the next line will be me, then the next piece will be fa, then the next line, so, you know, so that's the way it goes. The same thing with the sharps as well. Don't worry, we're still going to have practical classes of sight singing, but um, we just want to be sure that we have all these basics and we understand them very well. All right. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, any question so far on what we have, what we have learned? Any question, please? Is there any question? Okay, that's fine. That means that we do not have any question. Let's move on to intervals. Intervals, an interval in music is, is the distance in pitch from one note to another, okay? Intervals are measured by the number of letter names from the lower note to the upper, both of which are included in the count. So what we mean by that is that from C to D now, there are only two letter names included, all right? So that's an interval. If you, if you bring your keyboard back to memory now, you will see that uh, you move from, if you move from one letter on the keyboard to another, you'll be able to see, okay, I'm moving from this to that and from that to that. So even if you bring stave to mind, your stave, if you're moving from one, one note to another, then you know that, okay. So if you move from a line to another line, you will see that that's, you have jumped a particular, you have jumped the space. So 
this is intervals now. We're talking about intervals now. That's a, that's a longer interval than you moving from a line to a space. Let me come again. If you move from a line to a line, that's a longer interval than you moving from a line to the next space. So moving from the, from the line to the next line on the stave is a longer interval than moving from the line to the next space. So, and you will, we will meet intervals along the line when we are sight singing. We will meet intervals along the line. So from C to D, there are only two letter names. Okay, so that means that this is an interval of a second. All right. So if you move from C to E, that's like you and you know before you get to E now you have jumped D. So you have C D E. All right. That is an interval of a third. Okay. If you move from C to F, we're gonna be we have jumped D and E. So that is a fourth, all right? So we, from C to F is a fourth, interval of a fourth, and from C to G is a fifth. So that's the way it goes, all right? So now, when the two notes from, uh, when the two notes which form an interval, both belong to the same key and can be found, uh, uh, same key, and can be found in its scale, the interval is said to be diatonic. So we can have a diatonic interval. A diatonic interval you, uh, um, is, consists of two notes which form an, um, two notes of the same key and they are found in the same scale. With that, you have an inter diatonic interval between those two notes. All right. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the diatonic interval of a tone of C to D is called a major second. Okay, it's 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 all you can say. Let's say a, a, a diatonic second. I don't want us to dwell much on the major and the minor now because we are still going to get there later. But let's just dwell on the second and all that. So the diatonic interval of C to D now is a diatonic second, so to say, or a major second, all right? And a diatonic interval of a semitone. Now, you can now see it's a full tone from C to D. So we say it's a major second. But from E to F, if you look at the keyboard, can you bring the picture of the keyboard back to mind? If you move from E to F, is that a full tone or a semitone from E to F, brethren? Semitone. That's a semitone. All right. So that's why we said that's a minor second. So it's, it's all second anyway, because remember what we said about this interval of a second, that you are moving from just this note to the next note. You are not jumping any note. All right. So that's why it's a second. If you jump a note, that's a third. If you jump two notes, that's a fourth. So this interval is an interval of a second, but we are trying to make a little difference now that the interval is involving a full tone. That's why it's a major second. But if it's involving a semitone, that's a minor second. I just believe that that's, that's, that, that's comprehensible, all right? So the intervals of a third are also described as major or minor. We have left the second now. We're trying to say major and minor. Let's come to the intervals of a third. You can describe them as major or minor as well. Okay, from C to E, from C to E is a major third. But from A to C is a minor third. Why? Who can tell me why that's a minor third? After all, they are, they are both thirds. A to C is a third because at least we jumped a note. And C to E, we jumped a note. So what's the difference between the major third and the minor third? Why, why, why did this become a minor third? Who can contribute? I, I, I guess because the distance between B and C 
because it's a semi -tone. Maybe that is why it's called minus. Tone. That's exactly what it is. There's a semi tone involved there. All right. Okay. So intervals of a fourth and that of a fifth. They are described as perfect intervals. So uh, when we talk about perfect intervals, now we're not we're not we're not seeing minor uh, minor fourth, <laughs> uh, major fourth, minor fourth. No, okay, we're not talking about that. And then minor fifth, major fifth. No, that only ends on second and the third intervals. When you come to the fourth you don't have, they are just referred to as perfect intervals. Perfect intervals, the fourth and the fifth intervals, they are perfect intervals. If you look at these diatonic intervals that I put below here, you will see that, um, can you see my cursor? You will see that the distance between the middle C here and the next note. What are these notes, brethren? C and what? What's the next one? Someone should tell us. D. C and D. All right. So this C and D now is um, what do we call this interval now? Between C and D. Contributions between C hmm? major second. That's that's a major second. Thank you. What from between C and E? Because that's what we have at the second one, isn't it? It is C between C and E. What's this interval? Major third. Major third. C and E. C D E. All right, you are correct. Uh, and then from between C and what is the next one? The first one in, in this one is C, but the, the, the next one is what? What's the, what's the name of this, uh, this note? F. F, all right. So um, the interval here is what? Minor. <laughs> Major that's a, that's a perfect interval. It's a perfect interval. There is no major or minor fourth. You know, that was what I just finished saying. Maybe you forgot. Okay. When you come to fourth and fifth intervals, you don't have minor or major. So just a perfect fourth, perfect fifth. The last one is a perfect fifth as well. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Intervals from the tonic up to the fifth in the scale of A minor. Okay. I hope as you are listening now, you have your book and your pen. Just in case I want to, I want to talk and say, write a short quiz on what we have just discussed. Number one, answer this. Number two, answer this. Number three, answer this. And then you snap and send to me. All right, I'm not saying I want to do that now. Okay, so but. It will be good for you to have a pen and paper and you're jotting something because I might just want to do a class activity. All right. Okay. So the intervals from the tonic up to the fifth in the scale of A minor, that's what we have here. And can you see why the, see what this one is called? Major second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Okay. All right. Um, so this is this is on the scale of A minor. If I tell you to construct the intervals from the tonic up to the fifth, and you label them accordingly on the scale of okay, I won't say C minor now. Because I've not taught you the minor and the major scale. I've not taught you the minor scales. Okay, we've not got into scales. Let me just say, if I tell you to construct, you know, uh, 
on the scale of B flat major, construct, okay, it has to have a minor. All right, but do you have a full understanding of what I'm trying to describe here? Do, does anyone have a question from what we have just descri described? How do we know it's minor? Um, yeah, you <laughs> okay, you will get there. Okay, how, we, how do we know is minor, especially in what I've just described to you, is that if it involves a semitone in the interval, in the distance between the first and the last, let me come again. Yes. If you look at the first note and the next note, and there is a semitone interval, there's a semitone in between them in any way, and it is not an interval of a fourth or a fifth. Let me come again very well so that you can be able to get it. If between the first note and the next note, there is no semitone in between them, and it is not a fourth or a fifth, then it's a minor. Is either a minor second or a minor third? B8. Yes, I understand. So if there's no semitone, it will be uh, it will a be major. Made. Yes. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. All right. This is scales, but I always like it that my lectures are not more than one hour. So we will, we will we will go to the next. Uh, we will go to these scales in our next lecture on Wednesday by one o'clock. That's during break time of any work anyway. So I do believe that we should be able to have the time to come together. And so I want to thank you for attending the lecture today. I want to take your questions. If you have any question, can you please? indicate and then on what we have discussed uh, whatever we have discussed now i want you to uh, ask your question and then we will wrap it up for tonight is there any question okay in the absence of question um then that means we are going to bring this class to an end for tonight. And our next class is, oh, B8 is having a question. B8, can you ask your question? Uh, my question is not on the lesson today. But okay. I just want to thank you. You said we should let you know if we have any, any challenge in our previous class. Yes, please. So, uh, uh, me, I need, I need the explanation of meta. I've not, I've not gone through, uh, we've not gone through that in my previous class. Okay. All right. So, okay. All right. So what is going to happen is that after this class, I'm going to send you the lecture notes. Everyone is going to have access to it. Okay. You will be able to read the previous, uh, previous lesson. You'll be able to read the lesson we've just considered. You'll be able to read the lesson we're going to consider next week and even digest it before that time. So it will make you to even understand more. So after you have gone through that, if you and you now doesn't, uh, you, if you still now have a, a problem, now private chat me, and then we will talk about it. Is that fine? It's fine. All right. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other question? Okay. So we're going to be wrapping it up for today. Let me quickly take attendance to know. Uh, just to be sure the people that are here. Some people left along the line and I'm not sure, but let me just take the attendance for today. Um, uh, for the purpose of my recording, I want to say that thank you for coming and uh, uh, God bless you for coming in Jesus' name. <laughs>